I'm an NPC, and today I'm going to show you how you can create this cool parallax effect in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in only a couple of minutes. To get started, let's create an index.html file as well as a style.css file. We are also having this images folder right here, which you can download in the description. Right here, you have all of the images that you'll need for the parallax effect, like the bridge, the train, the mountains, some more mountains, and the background. So let's start by creating a basic HTML template. And now let's link our style shield in the head of this template. Let's get started by creating a header right here and a main section right below. Instead of the header, we are going to have our images. So I'm going to say right here we have the container. And this container is a wrapper for all of our images. And the source is going to point to our images folder. And let's start by selecting our first image, like so. And now let's duplicate this image a couple of times. And let's take 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So now we have all of our images. Let's start the page with our live server. And now you can see this right here is the result. So this obviously looks terrible. So let's fix that one by going inside of our style.css file. Let's first of all use the universal selector, set the margin to zero, the padding to zero, and set box sizing to border box. So we're just setting our basic styles. I also prepared some variables that we can use to define our colors later on. So I'm going to say colon root. And right here, I define my variables. So we have a dark text, we have a light text, and we also have a gradient. You don't need to use the exact same colors, but feel free to do so. And this right here is a gradient that essentially just defines a linear gradient that goes from top to bottom. But again, you don't really need this. This is just to make the text look a little bit better later on. Now we want our header to be the wrapper for all of the images. So we're going to say that our header will have a width of 100%. So essentially it takes up the entire width and a height of 100 viewport height. So it takes up the entire height. Our images are going to be inside of this header. So we say overflow hidden because we don't want those images to overflow. We want them to stay inside of the header. And as you can see now, the images are cut off. So let's also say for the header that that one will have a position of relative. So we can position our images later on relative to our header by using position absolute for our images. So let's say header images position absolute. This allows us to position our images relative to the header. And for the images, we say take up 100% of the width and 100% of the height. We'll align all of our images to the bottom. So we say bottom is zero for all of the images. So we have this effect. Now we need to arrange those images properly by using set index. And in order to do so, I give every single image an ID of one, for example, for the first one, two for the second one, and five right here. So this should work. So now let's target hashtag one. Let's duplicate those ones five times. Right here we have two and five. And as you can see, hashtag one, so this image right here, should be the image in the foreground. So that one should have a set index of, let's say, six, for example. Number two should have a set index of five, therefore. Number three, set index of four set index of three and set index of two. We're going to refresh the page. And as you can see, now everything is aligned properly. Now let's create a main section right below this section. So we're seeing something later on once we start to scroll. So we're going to go in here. We target our main tag and we say that we want to have a background of, and I completely forgot to define a background, so I'm going to do that run right now. I'm going to say dash dash bg is going to be equal to this hex code right here. And now we can use bg as a variable by going in here and saying we want to get our variable of dash dash background. We're going to save this one. And now we have this background color, but our main section does not have any height. So we need to say padding top of 80 pixels, for example. And I want to use this padding later on anyways, so that's all right. And right below, I want to have an H1. So we can create a section right below instead of our main container. So let's say section. Instead of the section, we want to have an H1. We want to have an H2 right above. And for the H1, we can, for example, say I am Laplace, for example. And Laplace is, for example, a professional web designer. So we're going to save that one. Now we get this effect. Obviously, it looks completely terrible, so we'll fix that in a second. But first, let's create a div right below. And inside of this div, we'll have another div. This div contains paragraph that has, for example, 20 words. Let's go to the next row. Let's create another paragraph. And let's say that one has 
50 words, for example. So now we have this div with a couple of characters. And right below, we create another paragraph that, for example, has 80 words. We're going to save that one. So now we should have a couple of paragraphs. And you'll see in a second why. First of all, I want to say that this entire section, so main section, will have a width of 80% and a margin of auto. So it's aligned to the center, as you can see. Now I'm going to target our main section, H2. That one will have a color of var, light text, a font size of 4 REM. So it's going to be bigger, as you can see. And I also want to use a different font family. And I know that one that I'm going to use right now is not perfect, but it's probably the easiest way. If you want to get a better font, feel free to use a better font. But I'm going to use System UI because that one is pretty much all right and looks kind of nice for the amount of effort that we have to put in. So now we have this effect. For the text, I also want to have text align of center because I want this text to be centered. And now I'm also going to target our H one for example and i'm going to say this one is a little bit bigger or a lot bigger so we use 8 ram so we have this effect right here i also want to have a slightly smaller line height of one for example so that they are closer together i want to use a little bit of margin to the top of maybe 40 pixels like so and now i want to use a gradient for that one and that is a little bit difficult inside of css but we can use the background property and I can use a variable again that says dash dash gradient and that one is essentially just a normal gradient as you can see right here so we are saying linear gradient to bottom from this color to this color but you will see that this here looks pretty weird and the reason for this is that we need some additional properties instead of CSS to make this one work the first one is background minus clip we have to set this one to text and as you can see without that one we're getting this weird effect, but with this clip property, we're getting this effect. Now let's also say for the color, we're going to use transparent. So now we have this effect right here. So now we have this gradient effect. Next up, I want to style our text. So I'm going to say main section. And now let's say dot text minus container. We don't have that class yet. So I'm going to create that class by saying the class for that one is class text minus container. And actually, I want to have this class one level higher, so right here. So this text container includes all of the paragraphs. So the paragraphs inside of the div and the normal paragraph. And I want to have those paragraphs right here sitting next to this paragraph right here. So I'm going to say display flex. Color is going to be white. I'm going to save that one. So now we have them sitting next to each other. I also want to have a little bit of padding. So padding minus top, 40 pixels. And I want to have a gap between those items of maybe 20%, like so. So now there's a little bit of space. And for the color, I obviously don't want to use white, but I want to use dash dash dark text instead. I'm also going to use a font size that is equal to 1.2 REM, so a little bit bigger, as you can see. And now let me target the div in there. So div, and for this div, I want to use display flex, flex direction of column, so this here essentially targets those items right here. So those paragraphs in there. And I didn't really change too much yet, but I want to use a gap. And since flex direction is column, I'm going to create a gap between those items right here. So I'll say gap 20 pixels. Now we have a small gap between those items. I'm going to say font weight is equal to 500. So it looks a little bit bigger. And I'm actually going to say font weight is 500 for the entire text container. So now we have this effect right here. I would also like to have a little bit more padding to the bottom. So I'm going to say for the entire main section, I use padding bottom of again, 80 pixels. So now this is our page. I'm also going to use a little bit more padding right here. So I'm just going to use 100, for example. So now this looks a little bit better to me. Now let's get to the important part, which is the parallax effect right here. So whenever we scroll, I want this train to move to the right, first of all. So now we need to use JavaScript. So we can either use a script tag or we could link an external JavaScript file. I'm going to create a script tag right here. So I'm going to say const one is going to be equal to document get element by ID. I'm going to grab one. So right now we are getting this image right here because we want to target this image later on, but we also want to target two, three, four, and five. So instead of one, we are getting two, three, 
4 and 5. And right here, I obviously also need to change the ID for those items. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and also 5. So whenever the user starts to scroll right now, we want to track that scroll height and we want to move this train a little bit to the right. So first of all, we need to create an event listener for our entire document. So we'll say document dot add event listener. What kind of event do we want to listen? We want to listen to the scroll event. So whenever the user scrolls, we want to do something. So we'll use a callback function right here. And now we need to get the scroll height. So essentially the scroll height on the Y axis. We can do so by saying let value be equal to window dot scroll y like so so now we're getting the value of the scroll height and now we need to use this scroll value to move our image to move our train to the right our train is number two so we're going to say two dot style dot where do we want to move it away from we want to move it away from the right so we say two dot style dot right to animate our right property and now the further we scroll so the higher the value the further we want to move it away from the right so we can say let's multiply our value by 0.4 for example and let's add a unit in our case we're going to use pixels so right now whenever we scroll we'll take that value multiply it by 0.4 so we reduce it slightly and add pixels to move our train by that amount to the right every time the user scrolls down and as you can see now we get this effect and obviously we want to have the movement into the other direction so we can just say minus value right here and as you can see now our train moves forward as you can see and maybe we can use a little bit more for that one and i think that would be kind of cool so 0.8 as you can see we get this moving train which is really really nice in my opinion but let's also move all of the other items to create an even better or even cooler parallax effect so let's say everything in the background moves to the bottom a little bit faster than this foreground image right here so we can target our third item so we can say three dot style dot bottom for example and now let's again use the value let's say times 0.4 for example and let's again use pixels we're going to save that one and let's take a look and as you can see we get this effect but again using minus value might make a little more sense in this case and as you can see now this background is moving down pretty fast so we're animating those rocks right here at the moment but as you can see this looks pretty weird so we also need to move those rocks down a little bit faster so we're just going to say for dot style dot bottom again minus value times and now let's say times 0 0.6 for example plus pixels so number four moves down even faster than number three let's take a look and as you can see this is the effect that we're getting so creating this parallax effect is really not that hard hope you learned a little bit and hope you have a great day